Thanks for staying on the program. Now, the West African Examination Council says it has registered 38 final year students of the Agri Memorial Senior High School for the West African Secondary School Certificate Examinations, which starts Monday. Uh, the head of WAEC, Reverend Samuel Imai Olenu, who spoke to join you, said measures have also been put in place to ensure students take the practicals they missed due to the non payment of fees. We have been able to register them. The ministry made a presentation to us that uh, we consented, so they have all been registered. And so the students can, can be confident of writing the exams uh, tomorrow, uh, Monday rather, sure. when it starts? Sure, sure, sure. They will be able to write their exam. Mm, I see. Let's let's look at this particular issue and the fact that the deadline had had passed. Well, uh, the penalty period also had had passed. How did WIEC manage to register these students? Well, of course, um, there will be some uh, administrative charges. For instance, um, some examiners that were in the region who conducted the practical exams will have to go back. You know, so some of these was the extra administrative uh, cost. But um, the good news is that um, they have all been registered and um, you know, they will take the exam. How about course, the you know, in mm. the interest of the coming day, WIC has you know, had to um, go the extra mile mm. so that um, their educational advancement will not be solved. What about those who may have missed some practicals, uh, practical exams? Yes, instructions have been given to the uh, um, examiners to go back to the school and conduct it for them. Of course, you know, we have other, for the science practicals, we have different alternatives. Alternative A, alternative B, alternative mm. C. So there is alternative B and alternative C. And so arrangements are being made for those who miss the alternative A to take either the alternative B or the alternative but does it, this not bring the repute of the practical exam into question? Not at all, because that has always been the arrangement. Political science lecturer at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Dr. Richard Amwakuba, has argued that Ghana's independence appears meaningless because the country's leaders preoccupy themselves with building monuments instead of passing on knowledge to the next generation. Speaking of the second Joy FM debate, Dr. Makuba said, Ghana has not developed like its peers after independence because its first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. There's something I have to say here. You see, uh, uh, maybe I was away too long, 30 years. Of course, I came home once a while. And then I come home finally to stay, and I'm teaching our students, and I'm having had such a hard time because I realize they can think. They cannot think. They can reason. It's almost like pulling their teeth. And so it makes it very, very difficult for me and several times I've come to the point of maybe quitting because it looks as if I'm wasting my time. But bit by bit, I see them, by the time they get to third year, I see them blossoming. And so that has encouraged me to go on. I teach them critical thinking, what I call counterfeit logic. Here's a situation. You live in a country and people are galvanized to fight for independence. Ghanaians thought, once we become independent, we are free. Well, here's the problem. You live in a country with so much hope, resources at its disposal, and then the first president takes over, and as I told you, the very people who could have helped him do a very good job became his enemies. We hear in Ghana, people say things like bomb throwers. We forget that the people in Krumah suspected tried to assassinate him, included his own men in the CPP. Well, here's the problem. If you make yourself president for life, 
if you make a law that says one party state, if you institute PDA, Prevent Prevention Detention Act, that you could be arrested without charge for any reason and in prison for five years later, change to 10 years. I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, what other option is left? Meanwhile, pathologist and former director of the Ghana Health Service, Professor Ajiman Bedou Akosa, disagrees with Dr. Mwakoba. He maintains that Ghana's independence has not lost its meaning. We sit down and almost are just prepared to be subservient in everything that we do. We seem to want to lose the battle. But I'm saying that Ghana's independence prepared us and put us on a platform for accelerated progress. And you and I have conspired to make sure that does not happen. And you have the audacity to sit down and say Ghana's independence has lost its meaning. It has certainly not lost its meaning. I sit down, you go and vote for politicians whose only essence is to make money for themselves. Whose fault is it? If you had voted against all those who have come and have made money for themselves, Ghana would be in this situation? But independence is not only economic development. No, it isn't. The fact that you're free and the fact that you will not be shot at 28th February crossroads is enough for you as a human being. The rest is for you to develop yourself. It's for you to develop yourself. We sit down and think that this country is, is what? Ghana can only be developed by you and I. You and I. This is Ghana. But I want to say that whatever has happened in this country, we still have got a platform for accelerated development. The choice is you and I. As we look at people who come to us for vote, you get five CDs, you get 10 CDs, you get 50 CDs, you get your lot and you vote. Ghana's independence has certainly not lost its meaning. If we say that, then Sergeant Ajete and Atipo and all these people would have just died in vain. And many people fought for the independence of this country. Let us not their lives be in vain for us to sit here today because we have acquired, acquired to all the things that are happening in this country. And we have the audacity to say Ghana's independence has lost its meaning. The People's National Convention has approved a roadmap ahead of its National Delegates Congress. The roadmap, among other things, urges the party to organize itself in order to strengthen it for the 2016 elections. The party also set timelines for constituency, regional and national delegates Congress. General Secretary of the PNC, Bernard Mona, explains the decision, uh, explains the decision earlier on News Desk. National Standing Committee meeting took decisions on our party that would lead to um, a national delegate conference to be staged in the Upper West region between the 14th to the 16th of August 2015. But before then, we'll have to conclude our constituency conferences by the close of May, 2000, May 2015 and regional conferences will have to be done by 30th June 2015. And then we have the National Delegates Conference on the 14th to the 16th of, of, of uh, August 2016. At the levels, we have decided at every level that filing fees that are supposed to be paid for the various levels no woman contesting any of the positions will pay filing fees. For instance, flag bearer aspirants are to pay 10,000 Ghana cities. If you are a female contestant, you pay no filing fee. Mm. Why did chairman, you take that decision? We took that decision because if you read the literature that has been churned out by gender groups, gender advocates, one of the major frustrations to women participation in our politics is that they do not have the logistics, they do not have the resources. And so we do not want that resource will be the reason for which the woman will not be able 
to participate in our process. So we are giving that as if you need to raise 10,000, whilst your male counterpart is raising 10,000 as filing fee, you possibly could be raising that one to be able to go around, maybe to make a poster, or maybe to reach out to some constituents. So we put you a step ahead of your male counterpart who is going to contest you. And so we use this as a motivation factor for our women. A prominent Nigerian citizen in Ghana suspects the elections in that country will not be free and fair. Chief Dele Mamudu, a former presidential aspirant and CEO of Ovation International, uh, claims there are signals that Africa's most populous nation may be headed back to military rule. He was speaking on the AM show ahead of tomorrow's polls in Nigeria. It's still conspiracy theories. Is it a woman whose child has been killed before by a witch begins to suspect every woman to be a witch? It's, a, it's an African proverb. Okay? So we have gone through so many things in my country that started like rumor. People will say it's a rumor, but rumor then crystallized into reality. There is nothing those who hold the levers of power will not do to keep it. <laughs> I mean, this is not me now. I'll quote a former president, in fact, the only man who has been military president and civilian president in Nigeria, General Oluche Gwabasanjo, told Mrs. Buhari only two or three days ago when she visited him in Adelkuta. He said, even one of the options on the table right now one of the cards, one of the last aces, one of the jokers is that if some people don't have their way, they are even thinking they don't mind handing over to the military. That sounds <laughs> very crazy. But if a former president can say that, please, we cannot dismiss it with a mere wave of the hand. So that is why I'm saying we are all praying and fasting. You can see my tummy is going down. We are all praying and fasting that our politicians will leave Nigeria in peace. Because those who are going to suffer are not the big men. It's the ordinary man on the street. We'll stay on the Nigerian elections. Some Nigerians in Ghana joining you spoke too said they were not expecting the borders to be closed as early as was done. Oh, the, we're supposed to have gone at least by Friday, but okay. unfortunately we heard that the border was locked this Thursday evening. Okay. So unfortunately we couldn't go till Monday when the uh, borders will be open. How is this affecting you? Oh, it's really affecting because I couldn't exercise my franchise as a citizen okay. of the nation. No, 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 there was no communication at all past. It just came all of a sudden. That's how we heard it. My colleague Roland Walker spoke earlier with Group Executive Editor of Digital Sense Media Africa, Remy Inweke. In every uh, political setting, uh, Nigerians are ready to go to the pools. Uh, we had the uh, skirmishes of uh, uh, disturbances in few places, but the police is on top of it. So uh, I think generally Nigerians are ready to go and uh, exercise their civic rights. INEC uh, chairman has also uh, confirmed that they, they started moving uh, uh, ballot uh, papers and uh, materials almost a week before. I actually don't see much of the ranks to be closed because the, the, the power of incumbency is there, especially when you look at the, the most of the things the opposition say they will be doing are already been done by the incumbent vote. On the internet and, and also on the news a lot, we tend to see pictures and also videos of um, uh, PDP members, etc., especially far up north, um, giving out or doling out a lot more money. Has money become a center stage of campaigning for, for this very election? Well, generally, in every, in every climb, money is an issue when it comes to election. That's why in some states, 
is called that the uh, electoral empires normally place ceiling on what could be spent for political purposes or for campaign or for before elections. It's not necessarily because it is for vote buying. It's going to be difficult for anybody to buy vote at this time because one, the INEC has concluded arrangement for this election to be held with the card readers and the PVC. So, and with the card readers, it means that if the your, your biometric does not match what they already already registered before they issue the PVC, then they see that you may not use that particular card to to vote. And that means that, that vote become null and void. We know that at least two journalists from Al Jazeera were detained and, and there were a number of harassment also that were reported in the local media in Nigeria. Uh, so far, uh, how are their conditions and what has been the, 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 the role played by the media in the last six weeks? Well, uh, one thing you, you have to take uh, into cognizance is that usually there are accredited journalists for every election. And when you are accredited, you should be able to limit yourself within the accreditation that you have been given. What those journalists, according to the defense information that was made available, says that they were accredited for, for, for covering of the election, but they were now going to the areas where they, there was a kind of a, a ban for civilians to penetrate. So you begin to wonder what actually were their mission. Four Roman prisoners have been released unconditionally from the Insawan prisons where six judges are sitting temporarily today. The judges are expected to hear 77 cases altogether as part of efforts to ease congestion in the prisons. Chairman of the Justice for All program, Justice Clemens Honyanuga, tells us more about today's exercise. Or we'll bring you that uh, sound clip a little later. A man said Kwame Boateng is inside the prisons and joins us with the latest. Uh, Seth, how many more prisoners have been released? Uh, the number is 14 now. 14. And they have finished uh, sitting um, today. So 14 have been discharged unconditionally. Mm. And, um, and a number of them have also been remanded. Um, some have had their bail conditions vary. So that is the news here um, coming in. How, how many cases were heard today? Today, the judges had six of them, had 76 cases. Mm. And they have finished early today because uh, uh, their numbers were high. That is um, six as compared to the two who went to Australia last week to sit on um, 96 cases. So they have been able to finish uh, very early today. But you know, uh, when, when, he, when you are discharged, then he will warn you that should you come here again, should you commit the same offense uh, for which reason you are brought here, they will sentence you to life. So it's a warning, and he's been warning them that they should not, they should learn from uh, the conditions here so they should commit uh, those uh, offenses again uh, for them to get arrested. When do the hearings resume? Um, I, next week, because of the um, Easter festivities, um, uh, they will not continue, but right after, I'm told they will be going to Akute and um, maybe Tamale. Mm, I see. Now, you also but, but I also understand, um, henceforth, every month um, they will be sitting. Mm. Uh, uh, they will be sitting in, in our prisons to hear cases. Mm. You spoke with the uh, chairman for the Justice for All program. Share with us what he told you. Oh, Justice Clement Nyenuga, um, he told me about what they were coming to be here. Today, the number of cases they were here to listen and attend to, and um, why the numbers increased from two to six. And he told me that now um, it appears a number of judges are interested in uh, this justice for program, so they themselves have been called uh, that they want to be part of the hearing. Mm, I see. Now, for these 14 who have been uh, released, did you manage to have an interaction with any of them? Yes, I've spoken to a number of them. Some are very excited. Uh, been, uh, it's, uh, they're excited, yes, they were getting here because uh, they had been here. The one, one guy I spoke to uh, had been here for nine years, and he tells me that for the nine years, he had never been taken to court, uh, nor seen even the CID. Uh, some had been here eight years, six years, seven years, and he had never been taken to court. He excited going home, but it, it mixed feelings in Kemenia, if I can say so. How do they intend to get their lives back on track? 
Well, they tell me that they have learned a lot uh, from here. Uh, some have something they have skills what they used to do before they were out, some skills. So they are going to uh, improve on that and get something to do. Some have also learned how to preach. So preachers, then they are going to get some uh, churches and join and spread the word of God. Thank you very much, sir. Seth Kwame Boatin joined us from the Sawan prisons where some 14 Roman prisoners have been uh, released unconditionally from uh, the prisons. You're watching Joy News today. There's more to come here. Don't go away. You're watching Joy News today with me, Kemini Nyamani Amana. A man has been killed in the latest Burundi Alsa outbreak in some communities in the South municipality in Accra. He was among 50 people who contracted the disease through what doctors suspect to be contaminated water sources in the area. The head of the Oboom Health Center, Dr. Jerry Nunu, tells Joy News it is it is it has been a challenge treating some of the infected people because of their traditional beliefs um uh, according to the data available um the whole of last year we had 19 cases testing positive after uh, after samples have been taken to noguchi for confirmation and this year we had one positive case and um, if you put all together from january to now we have a total of 20 positive cases most of them are in the sub-district. Um, there are places like uh, Udumai, uh, Hobo, um, how do you call it, um, Dentra, uh, Balagono, which are all uh, communities under uh, Ubom sub-district. So majority of the cases do come from the sub-district, but there are times that some come from Kaswa, we have had some from Kibi, uh, there are people who come to visit their relatives here and then we tend to go on case finding and we, they, they do have it. Actually, no, no single cause has been identified, uh, but there are possible causes, water sources, um, some say hygiene. So mainly it's, it's blamed on water, transmission is, the suspicion is on water. So the disease is said to be a disease of poverty. And if you look at the economic status of people in the Bomsas district, definitely they, they are much below the poverty line. So if this disease is found here, it is not something that um, we, we are proud of, but it's not something that they could help it anyway. Because if they, they, they weren't so poor, they'll be able to afford good drinking water, have good hygiene, hygienic water to drink, even if it's not pipe. It's not tap water. Residents of Suriyiri, a suburb of Wa in the Upper West region, besieged the original hospital to demand explanation for the death of 27-year-old Mavis Mariama Ijusu. The deceased died at the hospital after she was delivered of her baby through caesarean section. Her death brings to six the total number of women who have died at the original hospital within a month. The diseased Mavis Maria Maidrisu was admitted at the maternity ward of the hospital on Wednesday morning. After several hours of labor pains without any success, a caesarean section was performed on her. The baby survived, but Maria Maidrisu died. The incident therefore angered residents of Suriyiri who stormed the regional hospital demanding explanations on the cause of death. According to their grieved residents, too many women are dying while giving birth at the hospital. They alleged that this month alone, six women have lost their lives through cesarean sections at the hospital, all from one doctor whose name they only gave as Dr. Dodu. We are having information on much alone. They recorded six death based on only this issue, pregnancy issue. Only such death. So if we could have a doctor who is so careless, or I don't know how to even describe it, so we are going to record such death on death, uh, on pregnancy. It's, it's so shameful. It's shameful. So we are here to 
to, to let the doctor come and tell us the reason why we are recording such an incident in Wa. We are not crying for our community alone. First, it was our son from Fongo, a community in Wa here. Now it is our own wife. So we don't know who will be next. This is not the first time it has happened at this hospital. First, it was a woman from Fungu, and it moved to about four places before coming to us. We want to know the cause of the death of this woman. They later besieged the hospital where the management was in a meeting. After waiting for several hours, five people from the aggrieved residents were called to join hospital management in the meeting. However, the doctor, who was alleged to have committed the act, was not at the meeting. The news team gathered the accused doctor was excused from the meeting for fear of attacks from residents. After 30 minutes behind closed doors, management of the hospital agreed to release the body for burial, though it will conduct investigations into the cause of death. Meanwhile, Deputy Upper West Regional Director of Ghana Health Service, in charge of clinical care, Uwuswansa, who was at the meeting, told Joy News he was shocked at allegations of drunkenness leveled against the doctor who conducted the C-session. Rafik Salam's report from WA. Member of Parliament for Mainshia South, Dr. Matthew Ubuku Prempe, has accused the Ministry of Transport of overstating the cost of the rehabilitation of the Kumasi Airport. According to the MP, the $29 million quoted is exorbitant. The MP's accusation followed the Transport Minister's response to an urgent question he filed requesting for the breakdown of the total cost of the project. The minister, Jafar Tivo, however, only gave a partial breakdown when she appeared before the house. The rehabilitation of existing airfield pavement works is 23,829,271.48 million US dollars. Consultancy services for construction supervision of rehabilitation of existing airfield pavement works is 409,829.42 thousand US dollars. Provision of aeronautical ground lighting systems at the airport, four million six hundred and fifty nine thousand five hundred and forty seven point seven nine. Four consultancy services for the provision of aeronautical ground lighting at the airport, one hundred and ninety four thousand four hundred and forty nine point two one. Total twenty nine million zero nine three zero nine seven point nine zero. Thank you. Set asphaltic overlay, seventy millimeters. She said aprons. She said drainage. Uh, she has mentioned six items. And all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that it should give the cost that added up to the twenty three million because that's what she said. This response, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempes said, was unsatisfactory and promised to probe further. The cost for that rehabilitation, for us who pass through the Kumasi airport regularly, is mind-boggling. I don't know where those estimates came from. To asphalt a 1.9 kilometer airport uh, runway at an astronomical figure of $23 million, I can't believe, I can't believe, it's unbelievable, it's obscene. If it was your money, would you have spent that amount on that road, on that uh, runway? I said, let's do a cost comparison. It will be the most expensive runway in the world. It, it's a road that can be audited, and I would, uh, I would enjoin, and I would employ on the uh, Transport Railway Committee of this parliament to go and do a better investigation and find out. The minister, meanwhile, has been asked by the speaker to make the breakdown available to the House by close of Thursday. Police have broken up a demonstration by a group of NDC supporters demanding the dismissal of the municipal chief executive of a jobbing, Afrifa Yamuaponko. The police contingent led by the district commander forced the demonstrators to gather at the ruling party's district headquarters, pointing out that they had no permit for the procession. Correspondent Ohimin Teria joins us with more over the telephone. Good afternoon, Ohimin. Good afternoon, Kemini. Oh, I mean, what more can you tell us about this uh, botched demonstration? Yes, uh, the demonstration, according to the organizers, uh, was supposed to have started at 7 a.m. this morning. Uh, by 10 a.m., it would have ended. But as the organizers waited several hours for patrons to uh, converge, 
they failed to turn up. So few of them uh, came, and with the support of brass band uh, music, they started uh, the street uh, procession. Uh, until uh, from the NDC constituency office, until we got to the uh, Jusohini's uh, palace, in front of the palace, that is where the district police commander, uh, in the company of uh, other police officers, uh, stormed the demonstrators and asked them uh, to stop. And at that point, they asked who granted them uh, the permit uh, to uh, go ahead with the demonstration by the organizers, uh, led by the deputy NDC constituency organizer, Ralph Yusuf, uh, told the police they had no permit, and that is when the police asked them uh, to suspend the demonstration and go back to the party office where police can engage them in a friendly talk. It, it, it took uh, some time before the demonstrators uh, uh, agreed uh, to the police uh, request. And uh, in the middle of the road, it nearly turned out that the demonstrators were very, very angry, but the police maintained their stand and drove the demonstrators back uh, to the constituency office, uh, where currently they are uh, meeting the demonstrators and also uh, talking about how best they can uh, resolve the issue committee. But did the demonstrators explain why they had no permits but embarked on the protests? I, I, I tried speaking to the organizers, and uh, according to them, they thought that this was uh, just a peaceful walk, it's a peaceful activity. There's no way somebody uh, will be you know, going haywire, going uh, against the law. So once they are NDC faithful, then uh, aside that they, the, the government, the party is in government, they thought that once they are in government, they can hit the streets anytime they want. So they did not even uh, think about going for uh, the permit before they hit the streets. They thought that it was okay for them to do that, but the police says no. We won't allow you. As the police said, what action it would take against uh, these demonst demonstrators? For now, police have not granted any uh, media interviews. As we speak now, they are uh, in uh, uh, close door meetings with the demonstrators, especially the leadership. But uh, uh, I could see the anger in the voice of the uh, municipal commander, uh, mm -hmm. Chief Superintendent uh, Bama, uh, who said that. Yeah, at that point, if the demonstrator does not heed to his orders and go beyond uh, a line, go beyond the police as they stood in, in the middle of the road, that is when he, he said that they will call more men to come and also uh, 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 arrest some of the demonstrators. But as we speak now, they are in hmm. close door meetings, and I believe after the meeting, that is where uh, we we'll speak. Let's to them look on, at. Uh, let's look also at the issue, the the reason that that the demonstrators embarked on uh, the so-called peaceful walk. Why do they want the MCE dismissed? Yes, uh, they, they 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 catalog the uh, grievances, and some of them include uh, the MC the attitude and behavior of the MCE, especially his human relationship. Uh, they, they said that the MCE insult and talk anyhow, especially to opinions in the party. Uh, and then he also also uh, sponsor uh, political opponents uh, contesting assembly elections. And uh, they said that he's on record to have slapped the assembly, the electrician in front of the municipal assembly uh, block, and also the coordinating director, uh, one uh, from Pong, who to in front of his uh, colleagues. Uh, a lot of uh, accusations. Has the MC reacted to any of these accusations? Uh, as we speak now, the uh, M MCE has not reacted, but I can, I can tell you I have been walking to uh, his uh, office. Uh, he stands at a point. If it's possible, we can talk to Mr. Efifa uh, Yamaha uh, and then uh, to, to get his reaction uh, to, to this uh, demonstration. So, well, Mr. Afifa Yamua Ponko, uh, how do you react to the issues that are being raised by some NDC uh, supporters in the constituency? There are no issues in the first place. I mean, how on this earth can anybody, anybody at all get up and, you know, come up with these innuendos, you know, doing their words about them, all that? Uh, I mean, there are no issues. Uh, but these things are quite normal in our, in our, in our scheme of things. You understand, as an MC, um, I'm bound to go through some of these things. You know, there happens to be time that party people can, you know, some, not all of them, some disgruntled ones, for that matter, will just get up and, 
uh, through their ways about us, I've already said, and do all manner of things. But you see, it behoves on a good manager of my caliber to take things easy, to make sure some of these things are uh, brought down. You know, you, you have to manage the situation in such a way that it doesn't affect government business, your own responsibilities here, and other things. So that's the way I look at it. So in the last year, let me ask, what is the relationship between you and the NDC uh, as a political party in the constituency? I don't, I don't get you. I don't get you. Maybe, maybe, for instance, the I'm, I'm, the, I'm the number one supporter here within the municipality. So if you ask me, what is my relationship between uh, myself and the NDC, I don't get you. There is cordial relationship between my very self and the constituency executives. You know, I control two constituencies here. And all the executives are... With me, you understand. Whatever, what, 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 my ability to control things here is very fantastic. You understand. I assumed duties here, and then mm. uh, that, that was, that was um, 2011. Okay. And just come on, look at what what, what has happened. Well, I mean, we'll continue this conversation in subsequent broadcasts. Thank you very much for the update. Now, the Auditor General's Department has conceded that it has not done enough to recover funds misappropriated by public officers. Deputy Auditor General in charge of Central Government Program says what has been happening is to rather encourage the institutions where such funds are misapplied to do their best to get the monies back. He was speaking at a meeting with key members of the pressure group Occupy Ghana in Accra. Kwete Nate sat through the meeting and joins us now with some more. Hello, Kwete. Kemini. What else came up at this meeting? Kemini, what came up strongly was that there wasn't an effective tracking system to, to check how officials who misapply state funds should be prosecuted and money therein should be retrieved. And for the Auditor General, they, they admitted that much has not been done in that respect. In the past, what they've, what they've done was to rely on the management of the institution to retrieve these monies. And they have not officially um, advised the Attorney General to pursue officials who misapply state funds. And for them, that has been the reason why um, the process where Millions of state funds are misapplied, yet little is retrieved. I see. What was Occupy Ghana's response to some of these uh, disclosures from the Auditor General's department? For them, they, they are happy with the way the meeting um, proceeded. They are happy with the development that came. Um, what stood up significantly was that they are going to have a memorandum of understanding whereby they are going to chart the way forward on how they can hold public officials who misapply state funds accountable. So the Auditor General is expecting Occupy Ghana to write to them, and based on that, they will develop a memorandum of understanding and see the way forward in how to ensure that they can retrieve money that are misapplied. Kwete, I'm grateful for your time. Kwete Nati sat through a meeting between Occupy Ghana and the Auditor General's Department. There's business news after this. Don't go away. Well, in business, the Director General of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Richard Anamu, has tasked the Trades Ministry to speed up its review of old laws which impede free clearance of goods at the ports. Richard Anamu told Joy Business laws like the Legislative Instruments 36, which regulates the exit of cargo before 3 p.m., remain legally redundant, looking at the current expansion at the ports. The Ministry of Trade and Industry, in collaboration with the Ghana Community Network Services Limited, GCNet, are in talks to fasten the process in clearing goods at the Tema port. Speaking on the sidelines of a workshop aimed at improving the port clearance process, Director General of the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, Richard Anamu, said the only way to ease congestion in the port is to amend existing legislative instruments concerning clearance of goods. Some of the laws are also obsolete. As I said, I mean, the LI 1060 law, which I mean, makes the, the, the exit of cargo I mean, after 3 o'clock almost impossible. Meanwhile, the ports are made to operate seven days a week, 24 hours. 
So what happens? Traffic has grown. You know, there have been amendments and attempts at amendments, but we need that to be publicly made known. Meanwhile, Executive Director of GCNet, Emmanuel Daku, says delays in port clearance are largely to be blamed on technical problems, winding bureaucracies and low level of compliance amongst government agencies and operators. He recommended sanctions against entities who shake their responsibilities in ensuring smooth clearing. Somebody has a right to enforce it. Those agencies that have the right to enforce, uh, that are being mandated to enforce should mandate it so that we all deliver. All of us, the service provider, DICs, they should be mandated. We should all be given service level agreements that you should be able to, if I'm an importer and I come to you as a DIC, issue uh, your my FCVR for me, that is the certificate that I require to show customs about like the value, the suggested value. It should be done within a matter of maybe not more than two days. The single window adopted by the GPHA is an electronic system which ensures the ease and clearance of goods devoid of fiscal assistance. I am Baba Tanda. Good afternoon. Let's talk sports. Now, the first Capital Plus Premier League enters week 12 this weekend with eight matches across all league centres. Now, the games will begin tomorrow at the Accra Sports Stadium where Accra Great Olympics host Wild All Stars. Now, we see the fixtures on the screens uh, pretty shortly. Um, Olympics up against Wild All Stars that is tomorrow at the Accra Sports Stadium. Uh, at the Watson and Clay Stadium is Edubiasi FC uh, up against Bichim United. I am sure every one of us knows that Edubiasi FC usually play their home matches in Bekwai, but uh, due to um, some technicalities with their field, they have been asked to play their first round matches at the Obwasi Linklay Stadium. So they currently share that with Ashgold. Right, so next game is Hearts of Lions versus Mediama SC at the Kwando Park. Ejiana Stars, the host Brukum Chelsea in Doma. Hazakes welcome Wafa to the Isipon Stadium in Takaradi. Ashgold travel to the Bronga Hafu region where they take on BA United at the Coronation Park. Inter Allies, they uh, host Hearts of Folk in a local derby at the Term Park and then at the Babayara Sports Stadium, we will see if Coach David Duncan can continue his winning streak after winning two games since joining Kumasi Asante Kotoko officially on a two year deal. So it will be Kotoko up against Liberty Professionals. Right, Leicester defender Jeffrey Schlopp and midfielder Seydou Salifu have joined the Black Stars camp in France ahead of the national team's international friendly games against Senegal and Mali. The two players arrived in the, camp, in the squad's camp in Paris on Wednesday evening to give coach Avram Grant a full 22-month squad for the matches. Ghana will face the Taranga Lions tomorrow at the Stade Océan in Le Havre and play against the Eagles of Mali three days later. All right, so you will do well to visit a Premier League venue this weekend as we enter week 12 of the first Capital Plus Premier League. Eight matches across all eight league centers across the country. So do well to be at one venue. My name is Baba Tando. Have a good afternoon. Watch and join news today. Here are our top stories. The West African Examination Council registers 38 final year students of the Accra Memorial Senior High School for the West African Secondary School Certificate Examination, which starts Monday. 14 remand prisoners have been released unconditionally from the Interwan prisons where six judges sat temporarily. Auditor General's department has conceded it has not done enough to recover funds misappropriated by public officers. Well, thank you very much for your company here. Visit myjoyonline.com for more news. It's been a great week. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the rest of our broadcast. My name is Kimini Nyamani Amana. Goodbye.